All right. Welcome back to the Consistency Corner podcast. I'm really excited to welcome back our guest today, Jordan Shonda King, who is a mentor that I have worked with recently as my business is scaling. And she's the founder of Easy Scaling, where, and I'm like not reading from your bio. I'm just going to say this right now. <laughs> but you know, she's a COO that helps her clients scale their business at different levels by figuring out A, what to focus on, and then B, having really practical strategies to take action and actually do the thing. And she recently launched Scaling School, a group program that gives you access to experts in operations, planning, visibility, sales, all the things that as a growing business owner, you need support with, but you can't focus on all at the same time. And so her team helps you figure out where to focus, what to do with really intentional and strategic guidance, and then access to experts and a great community to support you. So I'm really excited to have Jordan here today. How did I do on your intro? That was, that was so good. I'm going to have to re-listen to this and pull some of that. Like, I'm glad it's all coming through. <laughs> It's content repurposing. Um, we can pull that. It's as great. Go. Um, but you know, Jordan sees behind the scenes in a lot of business owners' worlds, and she works with online entrepreneurs, coaches, service providers. You have product-based businesses, people who own brick and mortars, event spaces, all sorts of different businesses. And so what I wanted to talk about today was who can benefit, particularly from a nine grid, and she and I worked on a nine grid for her brand together. So we'll talk a little bit about that and what that looked like. But my question for you before we dive into all of that is like, I want to just set the tone for everybody. What is your current relationship with social media? Oh, good grief. Um, I am not a big fan. If I'm, if I'm being really honest, uh, I assume you want me to be really honest, right? Yeah. So yep. I'm, I'm not a big fan. Um, of social media personally, I find it to be very distracting and not like a healthy use of my time uh, for many reasons. And and so I would say my relationship with social media is kind of like a little bit of a roller coaster. It's like up and down uh, from me not touching it whatsoever. I don't follow anyone. Um, on social media for, for, for that reason. Like I, I don't like to see people's content, but I've had long stretches of time where we have not used social media at all. And then I've had other stretches where I've paid someone to do our social media. I've had other times where I've done it myself, like literally you name it, I've probably done it. Uh, so it's a very up and down relationship. I, Luckily, right now I'm in kind of a good place in that my team does 99% of of our social media strategy and, and content and everything. And, I, and I'm kind of out of it now, uh, but it took a really, really, really long time to get there. And um, yeah, I still don't love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting that you don't follow anyone. Like that's an interesting yeah. thing. A couple of people do. And I love how you said it helps minimize distraction. It helps make it that you're not create like consuming content that is you know, changing the way you think about things. Um, yeah. How long have you followed zero people? Um, it's been close to a year and a half, I think, okay. that I've not followed anyone. And I'm specifically specifically talking about Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was actually one of the best decisions I've probably ever made as it relates to social media. They've 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 caught on to me now because when I first started doing that. I, when I would log on to the app, I would open the app. I wouldn't see anything. My feed would actually be blank. And that was nice. I loved that. Then they changed it to where I would see my own stuff, which was like kind of annoying. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I would like instantly get out of the app. It was like a great excuse to like open it and then be like, oh my gosh, what am I doing in here? I don't want to look at my own stuff. But now the algorithm is super smart. And so when I open it, it shows me a bunch of curated content that's like mostly parenting content. <laughs> and so it can suck me in sometimes. Uh, so I have to be kind of careful because they they figured out my, my game uh, yeah. to staying well, off the app. And the algorithm, I mean, like, that's the thing. It's always evolving. And I even have people ask me this question of like, well, the algorithm this, or I've heard it's bad to do that. Like it changes every five minutes. So yep. we need to not base our business success and our marketing strategy on an algorithm that we have no control over. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, yeah, this is, this is why I feel, uh, the way I do about social media. I, I don't have, I'm not a professional content creator, nor do I want to be. And I just don't have time to keep up with all of this stuff. So I'm yes. like, no, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Right. Like you, and I've heard you talk about this, about how like you're building a company, you're building yeah. a legit company that employs other people that serves clients. You're not a lifestyle brand. You're not an influencer. And so when we look at social media, we see so much freaking content that is like targeted towards those types of people. And those types yep. of people, good for you. Do what you do. There is a place for you in this world. But a business owner and a service provider trying to learn from those tips and tricks, it's just a completely different thing. No, oh, Well, I think this is what makes it really confusing is because the people who are good at content creation are the ones who are very good at marketing, you know, their solution to content creation, but that's just not the type of person or business that most businesses are. That's like, it's, it, it's what you see 90% of the time on social media, but it's not the norm. It, it's like a total outlier. And it can be very confusing, I think, for people to be on social media and be seeing what people are saying you need to do. And it's, it's just not practical yeah. uh, for people to, to, to approach social media in that way. Yeah. Like you didn't start your business to be a content creator. You started your business no. to serve your clients or to grow a company <laughs> or whatever it is your goals were. Most of us didn't get into business and be like, yes, I want to film, film 87 reels a day. Like nobody's saying <laughs> I want to film zero reels a day. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. with your Instagram presence, and this is kind of what led us to doing a nine grid for you, is you had an Instagram for your own personal name, your personal brand, and then you had an Instagram for the company that like you weren't doing anything with. And no. so talk me a little bit through your decision of like, why do we want to use a nine grid for the company page? Why did that make sense for you at that time? Yeah. And I think it's a question that a lot of at least my clients have, because it's super common for people to have multiple accounts, either multiple accounts that they've kind of like dabbled in um, and they have kind of running and they're trying to maintain or more like my situation where they have a personal brand account and then they maybe want to transition to more of a company account or, you know, something that's branded around a particular project or a particular you know, program or a particular whatever. Right. So that was our situation. I had the personal account that was built out, uh, the personal brand account. And then I know in my long-term plan for my business is uh, I know that it's not meant to be a personal brand. Right. And that's why we spend a lot of time on the branding and the name of the company and like all of the things that we do. Uh, so eventually I'm going to need to transition the account, uh, but getting started is like a really intimidating part of that process because I'm literally starting from zero followers and like zero content and 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 anything and and I don't want to manage two profiles and I don't want to pay my team to manage two profiles so that it became super obvious when when you were you and I were chatting that really the the company account needs to be kind of static. Mm -hmm. It's not really meant to be the one that we're growing right now. Eventually we'll switch everything over probably in the next six months to a year, we'll switch everything to the company account. Um, but that's a, that's a, a long game. And so for now it just needed to be, it needed to be anything other than blank. Right. And, and ideally something that was like professional and intentional that if people were finding it, because people would tag it, sometimes because people do know our brand name, there was nothing there. So it, it needed to be more of this like static brochure or static, you know, almost like a mini website for people who, who were tagging it or stumbling upon it or something. So the nine grid is, is an obvious, obvious choice for that. Yeah. And the kind of the other way that you could do it, which I'm, I've done for some clients and I'm sure you have clients that this would work for where you focus on your company and your brand and you're spending your time building that out. But like you as a human being, you as a person, people are still going to look you up. So we put an yeah. idea on your personal account so that people know exactly what they need to know. They know where to go to learn about what you're doing right now. And then it's really intentional. Yeah, exactly. There's so many ways that, that it can all play together. I mean, like I said, I have a lot of clients who have who have multiple accounts, maybe they have an account for their retreats that they do, or they have an account for, you know, a different side of their business that's coaching versus like their service-based business. And th that's when you start to get into the situation where like managing a social media account 
just one is already intense, as we've talked about. Like it, it almost never makes sense to be managing more than one. Yeah. And I like what you said about like, maybe you have a coaching business and a service provider business, or you're a in-person service provider. Like I'm thinking about like a doctor or a therapist, but then like you have an online component. You're talking to two different audiences. Totally. Yep. And so if we try to talk to multiple people, uh, nobody listens. Yep. So if we start talking to one person, then we're like ignoring our other person when we have two audiences. So splitting it out is a great way to support those people. And I think about a lot of different service providers I know that at first it's like, I don't have the bandwidth for two Instagrams. I can't keep up. Okay, great. This is a great solution to get that one started. And then we can always come back to it and build it out later. Yeah, a hundred percent. Even, even so, so far as like different kind of, um, avatars underneath one business. Mm -hmm. We've seen this before, you know, and, and you and I have talked about this. Like there's a big difference between done for you buyers and DIY buyers and like what you're selling. Like I can see even that for certain types of businesses being really helpful. And I, I've seen people do that where they have an account where they just, that's where like all of their templates are. You know, it's, it's almost like a template shop type deal because they're targeting different people. So then you can actually get way more creative with your ad targeting and, and other things to where it all makes sense on that one uh, that one account versus trying to do everything out of, out of the same one and confusing the hell out of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you mentioned ads because I want to talk about that. I know you were a big believer in ads and targeted oh, yeah. ads and really dialed in messaging. And I have found this like personally, as I'm scrolling, I'll get an ad from somebody, their product or service looks really super interesting. And I want to go look at their organic content and they don't have any, or and it's they've got like one post old, or it's like, yeah. Or even the ones, oh my gosh, this is the worst, where it's like, this person isn't on Instagram, they're only on Facebook. Well, then I yeah. don't want to see their ads on Instagram because yeah. I want to get yeah. to know them. So like every time I get an ad from those people, I'm like, I need to send them a DM that they need a nine grid. You should, you should. Yeah, I, I think it's tough because on, like I know for a fact, when I started with ads, I didn't have a, a very built out, profile. I mm -hmm. think I had like just started my Instagram and my Facebook page and I had like four followers. Right. So it's not to say that you can't do it without, you can't, it, you can still do as, even if you don't have like a really robust profile built out or like audience, I guess is a better way to say it before you have an audience built out, but like some content needs to be there. Like you still need to look like you're a legitimate business. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, that is, I think the part that you're getting at, like, if you have no content that's ever been posted, like that looks weird, mm -hmm. um, weirder than the, just having not very many followers. Yeah. And I've had people ask too, like, Oh, well, okay. But I don't, I don't get clients from Instagram. I get clients from referrals, like, which mm -hmm. we know happens with great service providers. They're going to get referrals. People are going to talk about you and refer you, but what happens when someone refers you and then they also like get a referral of someone that you compete. Well, they go to the internet and they look you up uh, and yeah. what are they finding on the <laughs> internet? Like if it's nothing. Well, that's money you could be leaving on the table. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe other people are different, but I don't know if I've ever worked with anyone without looking at their website and their social media profiles. Yeah. Like ever. Yeah. That's, that's just like basic vetting 101. <laughs> yes. Right? For sure. And a, a website redo or update, if you make some changes in your business can be really costly or time consuming where updating your Instagram profile is a lot of a lighter lift and yeah. can be done faster. You know, I did that recently. We, I worked with your team on some rebranding behind the scenes and it was like, okay, we're going to take all this rebranding. We're going to do a nine grid. And then slowly we're going to work behind the scenes to get the website done versus just like, oh no, 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 we have to do it all at once. It's going to take forever. The nine grid was a great way to do fast action. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to talk about this, but uh, obviously, you know, that that's what we do. So we do implementation behind the scenes for people. And so we know exactly what goes into uh, a web, a website redo, a brand, brand refresh, uh, you know, revising your copy or your messaging, like that, that stuff can snowball too. Um, it just takes a lot of time. Um, a lot of time, months and months and months and months typically to get that done and to get it done well. And a lot of money. Whereas we whipped out that nine grid in like two weeks Yeah, and it was yeah. posted. We, we have a really strategic conversation. We pull out the main points and we get it up there. And so it's like fast action. 
And yeah. people ask all the time, like, well, how long, like once I post it, like, what do I do next? Well, that depends. It depends on your business model. It depends on what you're doing to attract clients. It depends on how you're converting. And I talk with my clients about that to figure out where the nine grid fits in their funnel. But then like, like, well, how long do I, do I leave it up? Again, that depends on you and your business and what you're doing. If nothing changes in your business, you could leave it up for six months to a year. And then maybe we do a refresh. Um, or if things are changing in your business, you have a new offer, something happens, you change pricing, you change your availability, whatever it may be, you can edit it and put a new one up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we haven't touched ours since it's, yeah. it's probably been, it's maybe been close to six months. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You, know, you talked a little bit about like the amount of time spent behind the scenes on rebrand messaging, brand refresh. Why do you think it is, I want your opinion on why you think it is that takes so much time? Um, why does it take so much time? <laughs> it depends, I guess, <laughs> to like your point. Um, it's just a process. I think, you know, people really underestimate copy in particular. People underestimate how long it takes to do really good copy. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just like sitting down and like somebody typing up some words, like a lot goes into it, at least for us with our agency, we have quite a lengthy process that we're going to take someone through of like, fill out this form, get on this call. Like you're going to need to go back and forth. There's going to be revisions. Like the copywriter needs a couple of weeks to like do their thing. Some copywriters need more. It depends on how, how busy they are and, and all of that. So just the copy piece can take a while. And then the tech and design, like it, it's just, again, like it's not, it's not simple. And all of the different steps, it, it's back and forth and it involves real people, right? So yep. like you're going to have opinions and things that you want changed and then it's going to need to go back to the copywriter or it's going to need to go back to the designer. And so it's just, it's um, typically a lot of people have to be involved and lots of opinions and lots of, you know, tweaking and refining to get it to the final version. And then with websites, gosh, with websites, and, and I know you've found this, People do not realize how many pages they have on their website. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Most people are like, oh, I've got like, you know, these kind of like basic pages, homepage, about page. Like, okay, how many pages on your website with all your landing pages and opt-in pages and sales pages and checkout pages? How many pages have a navigation bar that we're going to have to mm -hmm. custom edit? You know, like it, it's just, there's just so much involved in it when you're talking about an existing established business with a lot of stuff that's in place. Um, it's different if you're just building something from scratch. But a lot yeah. of times, I mean, like I find that you build something from scratch and because your business continues to evolve, like you as a human continue to evolve, it does need maintenance. It needs oh, yeah. refreshing. And so oh, yeah. even if you've had success up to a certain point to get to that next level, that's where we really sometimes have to dig in and refine. You know, in my corporate experience, when I stepped into the marketing director role, that brand had been in existence for over 10 years, but there was refinement that needed to happen. There was clarification that needed to happen. And then once that happened, it was like, okay, from a design aesthetic perspective, we got to get really dialed in on what this looks like so that we can be consistent with yeah. the messaging to build authority. Yeah. And even small things can can kind of creep up on you. Like we haven't um, done a rebrand since we started, but we have kind of changed how we use our colors and, and different things like that over, over time. And, and so then you have to go back. It's like, oh, we don't use the blue anymore for the color of the text. We only use black, like little things like that, that just creep up on you because you've created so much yeah. that you have to go back and kind of like audit all the time. Like where it, what is going on here behind the scenes? And on this well, I know you're such a proponent of documentation. So as you grow yeah. in scale, having those things documented so that other people can step in and understand the guidelines and keep it, you know, consistent. And that takes time to think through. And mm -hmm. there's just so much, I think there's so much thinking involved when it comes to branding that people don't realize until they're in it. Yeah. Yeah. So one yeah, of the things sure. that, that we do in the nine grid process, and you went through this, so I'd love to kind of get your perspective on what it was mm -hmm. like, is we sit and we have a one hour call and talk about a lot of things. And then I kind of take it from there. So talk to me about how it was for you to do that and then be able to step away 
and get something back to provide feedback on and just kind of move on that it, it wasn't super laser laser labor intensive for you. Yeah. Um, I'm not being hyperbolic. That was like legitimately a dream come true for me because I'm a, I'm a very busy person. Okay. And I'm also a verbal processor. So, uh, I feel bad for our clients sometimes when we send them forms and we're like, you got to fill out this form because I don't want to fill out a form. And, and so to be able to just get on a call and, and just kind of like lay it all out there and have you prompt me and just be able to answer the questions, better information I feel like comes out that way. Um, at least for the type of uh, person that I am and like I, I do better in conversation and, and coming up with things on the fly. So that was super helpful for me. Uh, but also just because of my bandwidth, I, I don't have time to sit down and like kind of, if, if I had time to do that, I, I wouldn't need to hire someone to help me mm -hmm. with stuff. Right. Like that's what I need you to do that. <laughs> I need you to tell me what I need to tell you so that you can just go do it. It was, it was great. It was very, um, it was very painless, which is always something I'm looking for. Yeah. Painless, but also bespoke because oh, it's yeah. easy to go get like a template or a plug and play. And like, I even offer templates and prompts if you want to do it yourself, but to have somebody else look from the outside, looking into your business and mm -hmm. pull out like those important things. That's something that you don't get in a template, right? No, for sure. And it, like, I think everybody got to witness a little bit of this at the very beginning of this uh, episode, because if you would have asked me to describe my business, you know, and like what I, I would, I would have hemmed and hawed and been like, I don't know, like, you know, it takes me a minute to get there. That's why we have a bio that's already written out. Right. But that stuff takes a long time to craft in a really refined way. Whereas you are very good. I think at just like hearing the information or like seeing kind of what we do in a real time. And then just being able to kind of like communicate that in a really concise and, and also, um, uh, just, oh, oh. Sorry, notification. My computer was not on. Do no, not Honestly, <laughs> just a calendar notification. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, I'm echoing. Can you hear my echo? Mm -mm. Oh, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, in like a really concise and um, also like I don't know, like a it's like elaborate is not the right word, but like you make it sound better than I would <laughs> make it sound. Well, it's so funny that you say that because I was talking to another client this week and she was trying to answer a question and I was like, well, what if you just said it like this? And she was like, yeah, you're so good at this. Like you just know what yeah. to say. And I was like, you know what? That's one of those zone of genius things. We're like, you're, yeah. I'm good at it. I don't know. I'm good at it. I think everybody else is good at it. I don't understand that this is like a skill set that people value until I sit up, sit down and do it. And so even yeah. like working with somebody and learning about their business and being able to quickly say, this is what we do. This is who it's for. When it's your own business, because you and I have been working on my own business and I'm like, I don't know, but I can yeah. go talk about somebody else's business really easily. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's like some people are very, very good at this and have a knack for this like you do. Um, but even just having the outside perspective, it is like the key thing, I think, to be able to like process the information and then get someone else to put it into words um, who isn't on the inside because I, I, I just get caught up in like, I don't know what is the important thing that people need to hear, you know, like what is the unique thing? And it's just so hard to do that from the inside. You're too close to it. Yeah. Well, and you talk about the importance of the words and the copy and the fact that like copy mm -hmm. is something that we sometimes maybe don't give enough weight to or enough credit to. The n thing I love about the nine grid is we're writing copy for at least nine, if not 12 or 15 posts that now you could go repurpose somewhere else. You could oh, yeah. share that on LinkedIn. You could share it in an email. You can turn it into a script for a video. Like there's so much you can do with that copy. And I think people still don't understand how powerful it is to say the same thing over and over again, different ways. And that's oh, what this gosh. gives you. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. This is like one of my favorite things to harp on. Like if people are going to be creating content, I, I always say, if you are not being redundant, you are not doing it right. Like you're literally doing the opposite of what you should be doing. Like you should be so sick of saying the same things over and over again, because then you're still going to get people that are going to be like, oh, I had no idea you did that. <laughs> like, <laughs> or, oh, I had no idea you were doing this thing or like that, you know, it's very frustrating. But, um, 
people need to hear the same things over and over and over and over again. And if, if you even think about for people who do consume content, or if I think about like podcasts or books or things that I, I do consume, they're not all novel. It's literally the same stuff that I'm like re-listening to over and over and over again. And we're as humans, like really actually, I think attracted and like comforted by that. Like we seek out kind of the same information that just like reinforces the stuff that, that we're like interested in or learning about or, or whatever trying to implement. So it, it's doing your clients and your potential customers actually a real service to be redundant in your content. Yes. Oh my goodness. Is that like confirmation bias that like, we want to hear things over and over again. And I can yep. to like mentors that I have worked with, like, I'm going to sit in the one-on-one -on -one call with you and hear what you have to teach me, but then I'm going to go listen to your podcast, even though you said the same thing. I need to hear it again. <laughs> so funny. It takes the pressure off. It's real nice. You don't need to come up with new stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, so to wrap us up, I do want to ask one question about visibility, because one mm -hmm. of the things I love about a nine grid is when you've got that taken care of, you've got that box kind of checked for a professional Instagram presence. You still have to do something to get people to come see it, right? It's yeah. not a, so if you build it, they will come. So talk to me a little bit about press, PR, visibility, and how you maybe advise your clients or how you've in your own business used that as a top of funnel tool and why it's so important. Yeah. So I've used under this bucket of visibility, which I love to talk about, I have done a lot of things. And, and, and so I, I love talking about it because I find that it's, it's one of the things that people don't realize how many options they have. It's kind of like social media or referrals. I feel like it's kind of how like people think about it. It's like, oh, well, either I'm getting all of my clients from referrals or I have to be like doing this crazy stuff on social media. I'm like, okay. And then there's like, 50 other things in, in between. Right. And, and I see that with my clients, but we have also used easy scaling as a Guinea pig to do a ton of stuff under this bucket of like marketing and visibility. So we talked about ads, we've done a lot of ads and we've done a lot of different types of ads. So we've done ads straight to a high ticket service, like book a call, um, and made lots of money uh, from that style of ad. We've done traditional ads to like a freebie funnel and had, you know, I think over 10,000 people join our list just from running ads to that type of funnel. Uh, I think that networking and collaboration is like massively undervalued, especially in the online space. I've gotten a ton of clients and a ton of visibility and a ton of opportunities from doing stuff like that with, you know, collaborative things like, like, um, you know, bundles, which I know you're a big fan of. You do a lot of those or summits or, you know, speaking in other people's groups or just generally like getting on coffee chats and like networking calls. Like I love that type of stuff. And, and that works. Um, and then there's, you know, obviously content uh, that we can talk about, social media, those types of things. But then the PR, the PR that you mentioned, PR and podcast guesting, I like to kind of lump together because they feel really similar to me. But um, there's kind of two sides of it. So when I think about podcast guesting, it's like what we're doing right now, right? Like I'm coming onto your podcast. I'm gaining exposure to your audience who if they're listening to your podcast on a regular basis, they're probably very loyal to you. And so like they're inferring um, credibility and authority and expertise and trustworthiness uh, to me just because I'm on your podcast and they're loyal to you, which is great. So podcast mm -hmm. guesting is great for lead generation and actually getting clients. And then the PR side is fantastic for building credibility. So actually getting those bigger name logos. So, you know, we've been featured in the last year and Forbes and Business Insider and NASDAQ and like several other um, publications like that that are very credible in, in my industry. So it's all important, but uh, you have to have a professional uh, presence online to be able to do those things. Right. Yeah. And, and so it, it's, it's, um, there's just like a spectrum of so many things that you can do, but it all hinges on um, having kind of this like really, cohesive online brand. And, and obviously social media is a big part of that. Yeah. And one of the things that, you know, you mentioned so many options and it, I know people can get overwhelmed with like, oh my God, I don't have the bandwidth to do all those things. You don't have to do all of those things, no. but you have to choose one that we can be consistent with. 
and yeah. make sure that we've got one that attracts, we've got one that nurtures, and we've got one that converts. And that's what having CMO level, level strategy in your back pocket does. Having yep. somebody on your team, a strategic partner that's going to think about all of those things of where are we attracting, where are we nurturing, where are we converting, what containers are we using, what's the message we're putting into those containers, and then we execute. And then I know you are big on data, figuring out what is the data telling us after yep. 90 days or 60 days or six months even, and do we need to make tweaks? What do we layer in? What do we change? But if we try to do everything, none of it's going to work because we're trying no. to do too much. Yeah. And even if you're just trying to do a couple of things without any strategy or intention behind it, like you're probably going to be pretty disappointed mm -hmm. uh, and you have to know, and I don't think pe most people think about marketing in this way. You have to know how long to give something. So mm -hmm. when we did a big push for PR on getting like bigger name logos, we spent close to a year on that strategy. Mm -hmm. And you know what we weren't doing? All the other things that we were doing the year before, you know what it means? So like mm -hmm. it just... It, having someone, which I know is exactly your approach to things, who's like pinpointing the strategic actions to take, not just we're throwing spaghetti at the wall with all of these different tactics. Like you, you really need to know why you're using a tactic and how that fits into your bigger marketing strategy. And then you have to know how long to give it before you see results. So you're not just going to go pitch five podcasts and then be done with that strategy. Like that just, that's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're a big fan of the book clockwork and it makes me, yes. I was just thinking about how he talks about like the QBR and like, what's the primary goal, which is if you're, if you haven't read the book, it's like the queen bee role. Like what is your business here for? I think about every single one of your marketing strategies. Like what is its job? Yep. And it's not all sales. And that's something that like I preach is that if you're saying, oh, I pitched myself to 10 podcasts and I didn't get any sales. Well, that's not the way it works. That's yeah. getting you visibility. And now we have to nurture. And then we have to do things that convert. And so every single marketing strategy doesn't result in sales. But if you don't do it or certain parts of the funnel, you're never going to get to the sales. And so having yeah. somebody who can really look at those things objectively and figure out, is this worth the investment of either time or money? How long should we give it before we decide whether it's working or not? And is everything behind the scenes set up in order to make it successful? Your messaging, your funnels, your customer experience, all these other things that if they're not there, it's not the like content or the platform that's not working. Yeah. You're literally describing the hill that I will die on <laughs> when it comes to business. It's like, it's, a business is such a complicated ecosystem and people struggle when they don't look at it that way. When they look at each of their decisions in a silo or their projects or their strategies or their tactics as like one thing that's going to be the thing that's going to solve all the problems. Like you're always going to be disappointed if that's how you're approaching business because a business is just much more complicated and nuanced than that. And everything, every decision impacts several other areas of your business. Um, and other areas of your business should be consulted before you make a decision in one area. You know, it, it's, it's super important to look at your business that way. Yeah, for sure. I love that. That's the hill you're going to die on. Cause I yeah. I'm gonna go right up that hill with you. So like, important. It's never <laughs> just one thing. There's a lot never. of, and I find this a lot with my clients is that they get pitched so many marketing specialties because marketers yeah. are good at marketing. They and are the best at it, actually. <laughs> at it. And so I find <laughs> people invest in or chase down shiny objects because they don't have someone on their team looking at the big picture, looking yep. at how it all fits together. And even like I'll say, I have struggled as someone who would call myself more of a marketing generalist to be like, oh, maybe I should specialize because maybe it's easier. But like, I know people need the support of a generalist and someone that can look big picture for them. Yeah, same. Um, I'm, I'm on this uphill battle with you and I think it's really important and, and based in integrity and we need to stay the course because I could make a lot more money if I just went and sold like some simple niche solution that was five steps that promised something, you know, unrealistic, but it's not, I know for a fact, not just with my own experience, but with a lot of experience behind the scenes in business, 
that that's not what's actually going to help people. Yeah. So um, it, it has to be it has to be more comprehensive and holistic. Whether you're talking about your business generally or you're just talking about your marketing strategy specifically, it has to be holistic and. Yeah, those those shiny object uh magic bullet solutions. It's not not where it's at. Yeah. All right. I love it. Well, we're totally on the same page about that. And before we wrap up, I have a couple questions to ask just to get to know you a little bit better for our listeners. And we talk so much about brand values and that being something behind the scenes that is so incredibly important. So I'd love to know what is a brand value for easy scaling that right now is really top of mind for you. Oh, that's easy. Um, so we have several brand values. We've got a long list. I was going to pull it up and try to remember what they all are because I don't have them memorized. But uh, the one that always comes to mind first is transparency. So we're super, super big on being transparent, not just like broadly in our brand, but also like with our clients It's just, and, and with our team. It's how we approach pretty much everything that we do in business is uh, with this lens of radical honesty and transparency and telling it like it is and never sugarcoating it and being really honest and open and being willing to have conversations uh, publicly and behind the scenes. So yeah, that's I, I can definitely attest to that. I mean, you're so transparent in not only what you share with your clients, but publicly, like you shared your annual plan publicly of yeah. like, Hey, you guys want to see what we do, how we're planning? <laughs> Here you go. And I, I yeah. love that. Copy it if you want. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recommend it, but you can if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, we talked about Clockwork as a book, but I'd love to know one other book that you're loving lately. Um, and I'm oh. pretty sure I can guess what you're going to say. I know you can guess because I've been talking nonstop about it. Yeah. 10X is easier than 2X is what I'm reading right now. It had been recommended to me many times and I just had never put it on the list. And I, I started listening to it right at the right time as usually happens. And it's very expansive. It again, like, you know, talking about content being redundant, it, it, there's not a lot in there that I've like never heard of before, but it's presented in a really unique way that is coming to me at the right time to get me to kind of think about things in a really different way. Um, yeah. I highly recommend that book to literally any business owner. And, yeah. you know, if you read it now, great. If you read it later, it'll be the perfect time later. Well, I think what you said, that it'll be when you read it, it's the perfect time. And sometimes yeah. I like I've picked up books that people recommend and it's like just not vibing. And it's like, okay, this is not the right time to read this. Like I could always come yeah. back to it down the road. Profit first was like that. It was like I started to read it, but like I wasn't making any money yet. So this was not the right time. Yeah. To what read. am I supposed to do with this information? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. All right. Well, my last one, because we love to talk about consistency here, um, with the reminder that consistent doesn't equal constant, I would love to know something that you're very consistent with in your business that you're proud of. Oh, what am I consistent with in my business? Um, I think like our approach kind of generally to taking action and a and thinking about everything as like an experiment is we're very consistent with that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that it serves us really, really well to always just be trying things and not kind of sitting on the fence. I think a lot of people end up losing momentum or second guessing things or like, you know, letting perfectionism get the best of them when if they instead looked at everything as like a test and something that can be easily put out there and then they can pivot or, you know, look at data and then change directions whenever they want. And they have the permission to always do that. I think if more people took that approach, like they would see more progress more quickly. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the action is what leads to the progress, not perfection. Absolutely. It's just taking yeah. action and working through the process of it. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you are chasing perfection, you're only going to get there by taking action. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> might as well go ahead and start doing it. For sure. Well, this was a great conversation. Thank you again so much for being here. Everybody can definitely head over to Easy Scaling on Instagram. Check out the Nine Grid. Yeah. Um, where else can people connect with you and what do you have kind of going on? Can you talk a little bit about um, Scaling School? Yeah. Easiest place to find me other than Instagram um, and checking out the nine grid is easyscaling.com. Everything is on our website and scaling school is, you know, the place to be, you know, you've been in there for a while and you've watched that program evolved and we're so proud of it. Uh, we talked about, you know, having this holistic approach to business. So 
if anyone's curious kind of like where they need to be focusing on in their business, they can go take our free assessment called the BSAT, the Business Scaling Aptitude Test that will help you pinpoint what core area of your business do you need to be focusing on right now? Because a lot of times that's the the hardest thing to figure out because there are so many things that you could, you could potentially be focusing on. Uh, so I would love for everyone to go take that assessment and then, you know, come say hi on Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Jordan, so much for being here. This was a great conversation. Thank you.